Greetings and welcome to Factorio. I'm D Gray and today we continue our entry level 2 Megabase where we in the last episode just got our nice building train up and running so we can easily uh, expand out our base. In between episodes I just started to place down a bit of landfill here and get um, some of the trains and robot ports up and running here since we had some issue with robots crossing the lake and uh, I wanted to get that done in between episodes. It also means that I made a new grid with landfill. As you can see, it costs 32,000 landfill. So um, if you want this one, you can always get it on Discord. So uh, this leads us into today's episode, where um, we kind of want to uh, start to get the first beacon things down. Uh, we have beacons made. I hooked it up uh, in between episodes, maybe the episode before that. And uh, now we have a nice surplus of it, and we have um, speed modules and productivity modules uh, ready to be used. So um, I think that's a cool idea. We'll go and upgrade our iron. I think that is the main thing we'll do now, so we can have a nice beacon iron build. Do remember to leave a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, do remember to subscribe as well. So um, let's firstly let's just grab some beacons. Uh, might take this many, we probably won't need that much because uh, they are highly expensive in terms of power. So um, I don't want to go completely crazy. That would be uh, unwise until we have a better uh, power grid. So firstly, let's go to our little iron supply up here. Put on train stops, you can see iron plate loading which is uh, not keeping up as it stands right now. It is uh, too slow, the input is not good enough, and that is why I think this is a great candidate to uh, try and uh, beacon things and getting productivity in so it actually lasts longer, the resources we have. So let's just park you here. So as you can see, we have already set it up, ready to accept beacons. So why don't we just try it here on the insides first? Because each one of these actually covers twice as much, making them twice as good. And let's try and put in beacons as well. Uh, let's see, have they been delivered yet? Not quite. I could in theory just go and get them myself. Uh, just we have a few. But the robots are going right here to pick them up. So as you can see, we have things flowing in. We'll have to set up a beacon, so let's stay inside the range. And let's try and do just this row first. This one so we can see maximum speed and then just these two to actually uh, watch it in action. So beacons will start. We can very start you here, the first one, to get them a bit of center. There, should be the first. We'll fill you with speed. That sounded wrong. Then expand you down this way. Let's get a few more. And then get you all the way to the end. So we actually have two nice rows of this one just running. You hit that. I have to get you at the bottom one. Perfect. Now we can take this one, add it on the side next to it, right here, and get that running. Then each one of these will have to add in productivity. Now we're not able to uh, paste it down without removing them. Unfortunately, we can't take this one and place it on top. It doesn't allow you to insert uh, beacons or modules this way, but if you dismantle it first, then you're able to do it which is uh, kind of weird, but uh, that's the way it is, for now at least. So let's just fill you up with productivity modules. Might want to go and grab a few more. But it takes, exact it takes exactly 50. Yeah, exactly 50 here. If we just get 100 more, that'll be fine. So if you look here now, a normal one, consumes 186 uh, kilowatts of power per operation. 
this one now. Let's take uh, this one for example. Consumes 594. A 230% increase just from uh, that one and one beacon. When all of these are put in, it will be even faster. Let's get all of you placed. Can I get our robots to do it? Make it a bit faster. There we are. Now you should see a pretty huge increase in performance. If you look at our power drain now, you'll be able to see that if you do one minute, that beacons will shoot up quite uh, heavily uh, very soon. Let's see beacons. They go up to 21 megawatts already. That's about 5% of a total amount of power is just going to beacons. So uh, that is why you, you need to have a very, very good power grid before you, you activate these. But with them running, we will get 20% more out of these for every ore that goes in. And we can get it at an insane speed. Meaning if you look at the crafting speed of one of these, as soon as they are completely filled, you in. This one has the power of uh, all the beacons now. We see a crafting speed of 10. That means we should, in theory, uh, maybe dismantle. Wait, let's stop you and you, you, and you. I also want all of it to go into the middle one first. Let's try that. Want to see if we can get one full build in. Might only want the three bottom ones here when it's fully beaconed. And productivity. There we go. Very, very good. Consuming more and more power. But as you can see, it, it's quite important that uh, that you watch yourself. Oh, watch yourself when you start to do uh, beacon stuff. Because if you expand with beacons too fast, you will completely drain your network. The reason why you have speed modules or speed beacons in between is that if you see this one, crafting speed 2. I'll just wait until I get some more beacons. Or more productivity modules, sorry. Come over here. Let's go and get some. Um, if you don't have it, you'll run into the issue of uh, completely draining all your power. And uh, that is actually quite, quite bad. That's to steal all of these, that's fine. Low productivity modules. Oh, keep that at infinite, please. You keep you at infinite as well. Because I want to keep all of you on me. Is that uh, if you do it too fast, the, the entire base will just shut down. As simple as that. You won't be able to, to handle the increase in, uh, in power. Let's move over here. As I was trying to say before, if you see here, now it's a craft meet 1.4, but you still get the productivity. So in theory, if you just add in the productivity, it's it's good enough to just get more out of um, your items. But uh, that's all you're going to get. So let's get the rest of this beacon in. I think that'll be the best going forward. Let's take you over a few times. So there, there, and there. Let's get productivity modules and all of these. We have one, two, we can do about three rows more. Might not have enough for all of them. But I want to have at least one. Oh, look at that. Ooh, it's actually too strong at the moment. We are producing way more than we can output on the belt. That means we have to make this a bit shorter as well. Good to know. That's a craft and speed 10 plot. Ooh, that's way, way, way too many. Let's get this emptied out. Uh, please stop you. As you can see, it's way, way more powerful when you add beacons to it. Like, and... Insane amount more powerful. 
and each of these should get their own Rona. So one, two, three, four. That means we'll remove two of these. Or two columns. So let's remove this part. Let's get that away. Well, we can leave him. We just need to go to a different train in case we want to use him. Let's get you into your, each your, of your own lanes. I think that might actually be the only thing that's holding us back at the moment. Is that? There and there. Let's get you removed a bit. Just want to have it a bit easier time to see. Yep. Getting these in. So one, two, we'll have one, two, three, four. So that'll be one, two, three, four. So be you. You'll go out that way. This one will go one, two down. You'll go out that way. Means we have the first one going in here. There, there, and there. You'll go in. So one, two, three, four. Let's see if this is not good enough for what we need now. Hopefully it is. There, and you'll go here. Giving us this out. Uh, I can't remember the correct ratio for um, what's it called, electric furnaces fully beaconed to, um, to one blue belt. If you know, do you remember, oh, you're allowed to comment that down below. That would help me out a lot if, uh, if we knew. Let's get you two hooked up. We'll need to get you over here hooked up as well. I might want to skip the two over here for now. We'll see. We will see. Let's see. Let's get all of you done. Then we'll see the power drain in just a second. And the last one here on the side, I'll wait with this one for a little while. And let's get you, you, and you going. And that hopefully is going to consume all of the resources we have going in, giving us uh, a lot out. Maybe a full belt. It's going down to here at least. Uh, we might be able to get it to the bottom. But at least this is looking somewhat decent. So yeah, that is uh, is the way we're gonna beacon this. It doesn't look like well, it should get to the end afterwards. We can probably actually we can actually calculate how many we need. If this does one. Oh, do one here. Does one every 10 seconds. Graph and speed 10. Also, graph with 9.4, sorry. That means this consumes 9 items per second. Seriously. Does that mean that one of these can only supply 5 of these? That doesn't seem right. I'll have to go back and look at the math of that on that. So uh, just give me a sec and I'll just go and... Uh, check the math so be right back and we're back in guys so i just went and did the math on uh, on this build and as uh, some of you probably knew just from watching me build it it is way way overbuilt uh, there's no other way to say it um, the ratios for these is if you do double beacons all four of them touch you'll need just about uh 13 or 14 to make it run full speed, giving us uh, pretty compressed belts at the bottom. So um, if you try and go for, let's say 14, as that is an easy number to do, that you will need no further than to here is where we need to go. That means from here and down, this is pretty much waste, all of this in terms of throughput. So let's get you dismantled at least this part as that is more than uh, one full blue belt going in and we can't have that but 
Let's get beacons requested. We already have, of course I don't want any in the system being thrown out. That throws in. You're not going to be needed anymore. You're going to be needed. You can be changed to that one. So now we have a build that's way, way cheaper. We have 14 on each side. Should give us uh, a fully compressed belt. Uh, at least almost. And we'll see when it's running. As long as we have enough input. Uh, should we do more than four lines? Well, if we do more than four lines, we'll need more than one train unloading. And that should probably be fine. All of you. Thank you. There we are. All of that. You can all just get put somewhere else. I'm just picking all, all this stuff by hand because they're all filled up with iron. Because they had nowhere to put it. <laughs> there we are. So now we can start to let this run again and see what uh, what happens. Firstly, we just need to get you down to here. You are not needed. You are not needed. You are not needed. Yeah, let's get all of you hooked up. And then now the exciting thing is um, once in a while when doing belts or doing inserters on these, they don't fully compress. And we'll try and see if we can, can sort that somehow. And to be honest, let's get rid of this as well. I want to save that for something else. So let's remove you. That'll be fine. And then we'll get you up to here instead. Yes, that should be the maximum height. There, there, and there. Giving us max speed on these. We'll take you to the side as well. To make sure we actually have it running fast enough. So you'll go to here. Need a few more at the bottom. That one is the furthest out. Something like that. And um, instead of having 25 neutral, we only have 14 now. And that's going to save us a lot more. And as you can see, the blueprint is a lot smaller now. That means in theory, we can't fit in double this, maybe even three times this uh, inside one grid. Having three iron trains going in. And then three iron plate trains going out. Should be a pretty massive improvement. Now let's just get the power poles from this one. Into the same line. Now remove everything but the power poles please. You can go there. We'll need the same on this side. You go right here. Giving part of all of these. So now we should be able to hook this up again. We'll see how it goes in terms of throughput. We'll kind of change this one away from... Uh, two, three, four. Change this away from one of these size. Let's get you away. Make you a completely normal four lane balancer instead. As this is not as useful anymore. Get all of you removed. Now, since everything is going to be consumed, it is actually fine to just use our pretty standard fall in balancer. Please remove all of this as well. All of this junk. Let's get all of you hooked in. Should consume everything out here. As long as we have uh, blue belts supplying, that is. Let's get you down here. We ain't producing enough here to keep it going full speed, but um, I think it'll be fine nonetheless. Oh, whoops. So let's try and power this up. The speed is the maximum one we need. This will output and then hopefully we'll have out what we need. 
So here we go. The moment of truth. Did I mess up? Again, do you remember to uh, comment if I messed up or not? And see how close to full belt we will get. As you can see, we do have small gaps in it once in a while. Even though we should have... Oh, wait. Is that because you are not getting any? That could be some of the problems. So let's do you and you'll go to there. There, there, there. And there. Now you'll output to the belt. Because we're not getting a full belt in. So let's just disconnect these three just to see if we can get one full belt out as a test. Yes, that is full one full belt going out. Let's see if we can get a full compressed belt going this way then. Because it is going all the way down. And as you can see, we are pretty much fully compressed. There is small gaps in it that we uh, we have to solve to make sure it's fully compressed. Look at that. We are a bit we are producing a small amount, so that's why it actually still works. Just want to make sure we have no gaps in it. Ooh, a small gap there. Uh, a good way to so We're way overproducing. Could maybe remove the bottom one of this one. Let's try that. What if it gets you away as well? Get you away. We're still producing on this one. This one is outputting. We can do maybe. What if we do two outputs from this one onto the belt? Will we then be able to do what we want? It seems that it's always on the right side. The issue is maybe because this one is right on the right side. So what if we do this? Will that alleviate the problem? This is all theory crafting. No, that won't do it. Maybe moving it down one will solve the issue. Ooh, let's do that quickly before things backs up. Uh, can we go over this way then? Look, now it goes on that side instead. That is actually what we want. What if we do that? Will this, give, will this give us a full belt? As it looks fully compressed now. This one is... Huh. This one is backing up. That is not optimal. Hopefully it will start to solve itself, but... Um, As long as we're getting a fully compressed belt out, I can't complain much. And it's going to save us one beacon at each end. So that's actually fine. Let's get you away. We'll get... Not both of you. We'll get you away. Get you away. Here and here. Here. There. And then we'll copy this setup. That doesn't help us at all. We just change which one was, was going to be the bottleneck. To be honest, let's just uh, keep it as we had it uh, right here. I think that'll be fine. 13. Small amount going out less. Yeah, we can live with this little gap. You are allowed to give a better blueprint if you have one. Yeah, small amount. It goes down, that goes down. We'll keep it at this. This is good enough. It will save us uh, quite a bit in terms of uh, resources and power, more specifically. Uh, you fit in there, there, uh, there. So this is the setup we'll go with. Giving us four fully compressed belts going out into this one. Supplying all the items we need for the base. Though I'm a bit annoyed about this one because look, it's not even outputting anything. Hmm. That is once in a while. 
Well, well, we'll leave it at this. Then we'll just redesign this a bit in the future. As ratios is not the best. It's not what I'm the best at, but um, this seems to work pretty well. And the way we've built the base, it's very, very easy to uh, make it uh, bigger. There we are. You can c continue down this way. Go out. And uh, the power consumption right now should be a bit higher than uh, earlier. Oh, a bit better than earlier at least. We're at 49. Now we're at 38. Here it goes. It goes up pretty nicely here. There will be more gaps now since we're not getting enough uh, what's called iron in. The iron in problem I will solve right away by adding in a train. Train unloading right here. That will pretty much just grab a ton of uh, iron ore because we do have some in our base. Might also want to change this to own supply to two. So you two will probably just um, be saved. And then we'll have everything produced here go to these two. That means you two here, for now at least, will take from up here. Let's just get you down this way. And you can go up this way. Supplying in. So this will be our new iron setup. I'll want this to be built. Then we'll see how much better it is. So I'll be back in just a few seconds with when this is done building. So it's built and uh, we'll hook it up to deliver some iron ore to this place. Uh, luckily, we have already set up uh, some iron ore. I just don't. I just think we're missing the unloading. Oh, we even have the unloading. Where do we have an unloading spot? That is actually quite interesting. And I see that up here. Standing at depot. Oh yeah, we're needing it for uh, right. It's for the mall. So we have iron ore unloading right here. I was like, why are we needing that? But now we can change this one to iron ore unloading. Get the ore in. Maybe add a few more trains. Where did it go? If two is not enough to supply it, I don't think two will be enough. So um, let's just get two more trains running. Then we can have some in buffer as well. Because two is not a lot. Do this. That's... Copy that one. There it goes. There goes the second one. Go into the base, my precious. Getting even more iron ore out. Iron plates. Let's get the two trains. Luckily, when you have one and you copy the blueprint, it's very easy to set up two new. One, two, iron ore. You and you. And go and go. Uh, now we have what's it called? Four trains running with iron ore. That is being consumed at a pretty decent rate. If you're seeing, we're consuming less than uh, a blue belt going in, but we're getting a blue belt out. And the main reason for that is uh, the productivity. So we're saving a lot. That's going to save the throughput of our entire system mean that we can have uh, less trains running and uh, the resources we have can be used for more things. So this is pretty much how the setup will be going forward. Getting a very nice setup like this going everywhere in the, in the base. For now we have it for, um, for iron and I think that'll be fine. Next episode, um, not quite sure what we'll do yet. We might do some more things with beacons, but um, if you want this blueprint or you have an upgraded one that can solve the output issue down here, uh, do comment in Discord or on YouTube. And if you like this video, do remember to leave a like on the video as well. So um, as always, thank you so much for following and subscribing. And I've been Degray, and I'll see you next episode. Bye guys.